guys, I'm Lauren from Broadway World Raleigh, and I am sitting with Jason Gote, who North Carolinians probably know and remember from the summer production of North Carolina Theater's Newsies, um, which was so good, and you were such an impassioned Jack Kelly, it was amazing. So let's talk about Newsies for a minute, because I feel like you just, you just owned it. You just <laughs> embodied Jack Kelly. So tell me about that experience of, of taking on that role. Um, I love doing it. Jack is an awesome role. He's kind of the quintessential leading man in a lot of ways. He's powerful, he's vulnerable, he's the romantic lead. There's a love story, but he's also fighting for a cause. So there's all of these elements to him that make him um, a really exciting character to play. And it was one of those um, rehearsal processes where it was so short that you had no choice but to dive right in. And of course our director and choreographer Steve B. Bouton Parker Essie were amazing and encouraged us to just try things and, and be bold and fearless, which the character also kind of <laughs> asks you to do. So because it was uh, very uh, fast and furious, we were able to just dive right in and, and not be afraid of it. And that kind of helped me just fully give over to it. And it's such a well-written role that if you just uh, show up and go along for the ride, it, it kind of takes care of itself. So it was a blast. It was a great role. And you're coming back to North Carolina Theater yes. in Aladdin and His Winter Wish, <laughs> yeah. which opens at the end of November. Yes. And you mentioned the choreography of Newsies, which was off the charts. Um, this production I read, at least the Laguna you know, Beach production mm -hmm. of Aladdin and His Winter Wish was done by the same guy who's doing Head Over Heels, right. who did Hedwig, who did yeah. Spring Awakening. So tell me a little bit about the dancing that we get to see in Aladdin um, and His Winter Wish. And is it the same kind of high octane energy level that we saw in Newsies? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Aladdin and His Winter Wish is a ton of energy, it's a family show, there's incredible choreography and singing, and, and what it does is it takes the traditional Latin story we know and it adds pop music, contemporary pop music into it. So there's Bruno Mars, um, there might be a Carly Rae Jepsen song in there, if I remember correctly. So there's a ton of dancing, and um, yeah, exactly what you said, kind of high octane, energetic choreography. I don't know if this production is choreographed by Spencer Lift. I think we have a different director choreographer, so I'm excited to see what they bring that's new. But the production we did was definitely a ton of energy. Uh, a little bit of a different Aladdin than what you're used to, but all the more exciting because it is a familiar story, but done, you know, in a completely different way. Well, and is it the same character? I mean, Aladdin is the Aladdin character we know from kind of the fairy tale. Right. Jasmine, there's a or there's at least a princess. Yes, you in have it. Aladdin, the princess, you have the genie, of course, and a sultan. And you have a villain who isn't the Disney villain, but very similar, very similar type of of uh, bad guy. So you'll you'll feel like you're in good hands with his <laughs> version. You'll feel comfortable. Yeah. And this show I've read is being presented in traditional British panto style. What does that mean? Audience. British panto means that it's interactive, it's fun for the whole family, kids are allowed to you know, cheer for the good guy and boo the bad guy and sing along and sometimes the actors will ask them questions to get them involved and that's what the traditional British panto is. It's, it's interactive family fun and it's taking these well-known fairy tales and bringing them to the present by incorporating pop music of the day. So you know, no matter when panto is done, it's all about making it contemporary and, and fresh for audiences and including including the audience and families so obviously it's a family show I know North Carolina theater is hoping it becomes this new family holiday tradition yeah. um, why and Newsies is also a very very family show with such a cult following totally. of young people why is it important um, to kind of bring young people into the theater um, to see these shows and experience the theater and what are they getting out of it? What are you kind of getting from fans, young fans? This is an amazing question. I could talk about it for hours, so please cut me off whenever. <laughs> um, well, I also teach. I own a theater company and I work with young people in Brooklyn where I'm from and so I'm, I'm such a believer in the power of theater and um, 
why it's important for young people to experience it because it, it teaches young people to be empathetic, to see characters on stage and relate to them and connect to them and see different perspectives. I mean, at a very basic level, kids are watching you know two characters fall in love or have an agreement or a disagreement and they're able to understand um, why and think about those things and ask questions about why people do the things that they do. It sounds you know kind of meta, but it really uh, teaches people to um, to understand one another and to connect to, to different kinds of people and uh, then beyond that of course it's just a ton of fun and it's so entertaining and there's so much joy that families get from seeing these characters express themselves and, and sing and dance you know ex with such exuberance um, but it also allows them to to learn well, and it, to me, um, having children, it's usually two hours of unplugged time when you're with your child. And normally, any theater experience you go to kind of opens up a dialogue between parent and child. Um, so that's, I, I totally. think it's really and it's more than just watching a TV show or watching a movie because theater is live happening right in front of you and there's something so different about some someone watching another human experience something in real time in front of you. And then Panto takes it one step further by actually including you. You know, in some cases bringing kids up on stage, looking at them in the eyes and asking them questions and that kind of interaction is so rare. Like you said, that unplugged interaction and that's another reason why Panto is so special. So you're playing Aladdin in this production. You also played Spider-Man. Um, is right. there any other kind of dream iconic character like that that if there was a show written for them, would you mm. want to play? Like, well, I did. I did get the opportunity to do the world premiere of the musical The Prince of Egypt, which yep. of course is based on the Moses and Ramsey story, um, the Exodus story that we all know. And it was, of course, the score was written by Stephen Schwartz, which who's one of the you know theater legends. Um, so I got to work with him. I did two productions, one in California and one in Denmark. Mm -hmm. I was out in Europe for a couple of months doing that. And um, I played Ramses, who is the heir to the throne and, and brother to Moses. And that was, um, an experience completely unlike any other. I mean, talk about iconic figures in history. There's so much history there um, and such an amazing story, a brother relationship that is really, really beautiful. And I hope to continue to be a part of that. I know that they're continuing to work on it and I've helped develop the character now in two different productions. And, and so that, that was a very special one and I hope to see it live on. Absolutely, and Stephen Schwartz, I mean, that is just, yeah. you know. Say no you know, more. Yeah, <laughs> Wicked celebrating its 15th anniversary. I mean, it's, right. it, he's just a legend. Yeah, um, a legend. Yeah. And so what's next for you after Aladdin? Um, world domination. No, yeah. um, <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I've been so, so lucky. I'm doing a, an off-Broadway musical right now, another world premiere of a... It's a musical called Renaissance, and it's happening downtown with the Transport Group, an amazing off-Broadway company that does really experimental, exciting stuff. And it's about um, the first woman and the youngest person to ever win the Pulitzer Prize in poetry. And uh, she won it in the early 1900s, and she has a really fascinating story. It's a cool ensemble piece with six actors, and. I hope what's next for me is to continue do, developing new work, um, whether it's on a huge scale like The Prince of Egypt or something a little smaller and more, um, you know, intimate like Renaissance, which is what I'm, I'm doing now. I just love developing new work and I also love doing things like this, you know, made for families where you get to, you know, introduce the joy of theater to young people. Um, so yeah, I hope to just kind of keep doing more of what I'm doing. Well, we can't <laughs> help to, help, we can't wait to uh, see you back on the North Carolina theater stage. Um, Aladdin's Winter Wish, I think, opens up November 29th. That's right, yeah. Um, and so, and you're starring with um, old and beautiful star Nia. Um, so Can't people, wait to meet her. Yeah, soap opera, star, soap opera fans, CBS yeah. soap opera fans can uh, tune in for that. Yeah. And um, I, think, uh, I think that's it. We can't wait to see you back on our stage. Great. Come <laughs> see it. We'll see you there.